This is video number 19 now from digital-university.org. Um, in this video, we want to consider electrical circuits that have a current source and a voltage source and introduce the uh, method of um, super mesh current analysis. And the circuit that we want to consider is actually a modification of a problem that we had solved in one of the earlier videos. If you remove this current source here, then in fact this would be identical to one of our first problems that we solved using mesh current analysis. Now we want to see, take a look at the very same problem, but now see how do we analyze it if in addition to this voltage source, we also have this current source in the circuit. And the technique is to redraw the circuit where all current sources are removed. So we're going to just take this right out of the circuit so that now it, the circuit looks like this. So the uh, current source, as you can see, has been removed from it. And then what we do is, first let's go back and take a look at this. We had this originally, we had three windows here in the circuit. So we had three mesh currents, I1, I2, and I3. Now, with this current source removed, so that we have this kind of a circuit, where this is just open right here, then what we do is we form the super mesh current, starting from here, going around, including all these resistors that would be in this current, ignoring this resistor, of course, because no current is going to flow through there, and on back to the source. So this is our super mesh current and then still in this window we have mesh current number two. So now what we do is, just as we've been doing before, we go through here the entire loop and write out our mesh current. So what we have is for this resistor, this part of the loop consists of I1. This part of the loop consists of I3, of our super mesh loop here. So when we go ahead and go all the way around the loop and write our equations out, just as we've been doing before, we would have I1 times the value of that resistor, which is 1. So you have 1 times I1. And I2 flows in the opposite direction through that resistor. So we have minus 1 times current I2. Then as we continue to proceed around this super mesh, we're going to have I3 times 3 plus 1, so we have plus 4 times I3. And now flowing through this resistor is current I2, so we have minus 3 I2. And then this goes around back up to the battery source and we consider the super mesh current going through the battery so here it's going from a lower potential to a higher potential that's a positive voltage drop of 7 volts which you write on this side it's a positive voltage drop so we write it as a positive number like this and this then is super mesh current equation. 
And now here we have this loop where we have I2, current I2 times 3 plus 1 plus 2, so we have 6 I2. And now the super mesh current, well this part of the super mesh current consists of I1, so we have minus 1 times I1 because current I1 flows through this resistor in opposite direction to current I2. And then we also have to consider this resistor where I3 flows opposite to I2. So we have minus 3 I3. And there is no voltage source in this loop. So that equals 0. So the way things stand right now is we have two equations, but we have three things we want to solve for, I1, I2, and I3. So the way it stands right now, we don't have enough um, information to solve for the three different currents, I1, I2, and I3. But here, if we go back and look at our original circuit, and if we consider what is happening at this node right here, let's just grab a different color pen, because what you see is we have current I1 flows into the node, current I3 goes in this direction, so that flows out of the node, and here we have 7 amps flowing out of the node. And of course, the net current flow at any node we know is 0. So the way we can write that is we can say plus I3, because that's going away from the node, plus 7, that's going away from the node, minus I1, because that's entering the node, equals 0. So at the node, Let's just write it here. At the node, we have minus I1 plus I3 plus 7 equals 0. Minus I1 plus I3 plus 7 equals 0. And again, the way we write it like that is because we know that at this node, the net current entering it is 0. This goes away, so we say positive I3. This is going away from the node. That's plus 7. This is going into the node. That's minus I1. And the sum, of course, has to be 0. So what we see from looking at this is that I1 bring that over to here that equals I3 plus 7. So let's go back here and look at our equations. Here we have 1 times I1 but I1 that's the same thing as I3 plus 7. So here we have I3 plus 7 and then here we have minus I1 so here we will have minus I3 minus 7. Let's just be consistent. Write this in color. Here we have minus I3 minus 7. So let's see what we have here. This 7 and this 7 are going to cancel each other. So those are gone. And then here we have minus I2 minus 3I2. 
So from this equation we have minus 4 I2 and then here we have I3 from here and here we have plus 4 I3 that's plus 5 times I3 and now those sevens canceled so that equals zero again in this equation we replace I1 with I3 plus 7 and then we just collected the terms the 7 and the 7 cancel and now we have minus I2 minus 3I2 that's minus 4I2 plus 4I3 plus 1 times I3 that's 5 times I3 so this equation now appears like this and let's see what do we do about this equation here we have 6 times I2 and what else do we have in that equation here we have minus I3 minus 3I3 that is going to be minus 4 times I3 and here we have minus 7 bring it over to this side and we have plus 7 so now we're pretty well set up because we have two equations and two unknowns I2 and I3 so we can solve for each of these and then of course as soon as we determine the value of I3 we will know what current I1 is and the way to determine these values is the same procedure as what we've used in the uh, previous videos okay what we do is we're going to form a determinant with these two columns of numbers minus 4 6 5 and minus 4 that's the first step so we have minus 4 6 and we have 5 minus 4 and the value of that determinant will equal 16 minus 30 equals minus 14 okay so now to determine what I2 is we replace this column of numbers with this column of numbers and let's make some more room this column of numbers gets replaced with this column so we have 0, 7, 5, negative 4. We have that determinant divided by negative 14. And that will equal current I2. So let's see what we have. this is 0 and this is minus 35 so we have minus 35 divided by minus 14 that's two and a half amps so let's go up to here I2 equals plus 2.5 amps okay quickly let's get determine what I3 is and to do that it's the same setup except that here this column of numbers gets replaced with 0, 07 and this column stays the same so we have minus 4 6 and 0 7 so this will be equal to 7 times negative 4 is negative 28 
divided by minus 14 equals 2. So this is not I2 anymore now, this is I3. So I3 equals plus 2 amps. And I1 equals I3 plus 7, so I1 equals plus 9 amps. So there we have determined the three mesh currents, I1, I2, and I3. And let's just go back to here. That means that all the directions that we assume for these currents were correct, and of course we can subtract I2 and I3 to determine the amount that goes through this resistor, do the proper subtractions to determine the currents through these two resistors. The trick is that in the beginning of the problem, just leave that open like this, form your super mesh, and then in the super mesh is a node, and that node gives us further current relations that we use to go ahead and solve for the three values that we have, even though we only have two different mesh current equations for them. So that's the super mesh technique, and again, we'll have a couple other examples here to illustrate it for you. It comes in very handy, and again, this is now how you can apply it to circuits that have both a voltage source and a current source. So come back and join us for some more videos, and we'll see if we can solve maybe a couple more problems like this.